Dear Grade 12 students, welcome to English 312, Unit 4, Lesson 3. This time, describing a process. Before I start, as usual, I would like to remind you to please use your textbook, notebook, or a paper, have your pen or pencil along, and bring your dictionary because you might need to refer to it and have yourselves comfortably seated. With that, let's proceed further. The, ad, uh, the objectives by the end of this lesson, you should have identified the layout and structure of a process paragraph, located specific information related to describing a process, written a process paragraph. Now, when someone tells you, I need you to describe me a process, or I want you to tell me how to do a certain thing. For example, there is the certain food that I like, please do tell me how to do it. What are you going to do? What are, what are the things that you're going to take into consideration to help me come out with the production of this food? Take a minute and think. How will you write someone to, to come up with something, with a result of something? So for instance, let's say, uh, I like pasta and I want you to help me cook pasta. What are the things that you're going to tell me to do in order to cook a pasta? Think and note them down. Okay, when someone asks you to describe a process, it's usually a process paragraph explains how something is done. It's a description of how something work, works. It explains the steps you need to follow in order to complete a task or an activity. So in short, let's summarize this by saying, it's a number of steps, it's a sequence. So you're telling me number one do so, number two do so, number three do so, in order to come up with the final outcome. That's why we use linkers or connectors, first, second, third, next, then, after, after that, now, at this point, finally, at last, the last step, while, when, until, and so on. These are called linkers or characters, connectors. Usually, while describing a process, we refer to them. Okay, now, what I want you to do is read the following science experiment. First read it, and after you read it, we'll go step by step. Let's start with reading. I'll give you two minutes. Okay, let's read it all together. Evaporation is the process of changing from a liquid to a vapor. A simple experiment can be done to learn more about how evaporation works. First, Collect the necessary supplies to complete the experiment. One sheet of black construction paper, a small paint brush, a, a small cup of water, and a watch with a second hand. Next, place the paper on a dry flat surface in the sheet, then wet the paint brush in the water and dab a drop of water onto the black paper. After wetting the paper, begin timing how long it takes for the, for the water to stain to dry up or evaporate. When the water has dried, write the time down. At this point, begin the same experiment again by completing all of the steps, except that this paper should be placed under, uh, under a direct sunlight or some type of heat source. Time how much the water takes to evaporate again. Finally, Compare the two times and answer the following questions. Now, after reading the paragraph, what I want you to do is list the steps for completing the experiment in the order you find them. As I told you, when you're going to explain a process to someone, you follow the chronological order. So one, two, three, next, after that, finally, and so on. What I want you to do is that I want you to get back to the paragraph and note them down in the order that you find them. They might be long sentences, but at least give me the, the main words. I will be presenting the answers in a while. I'll give you two minutes to note them down. Stop. This is an example just to help you. So first, 
Why did I choose this? Because it says first. I, ke I kept it. What about the rest? Okay, let's check your answers. Since it's in the order that you found them, it should be easy. Check your answers. Again, I kept the colors matching so that it's easier for you to track it. How did I choose them? By looking directly and by searching directly at the linkers. So first, next, then, after. It helps me follow the process. Based on that, I selected the answers. Shall we move on? It's easy, clear. When you want to follow a certain process, look at the keywords, the linkers. They will directly direct you on how a certain thing is taking place. Okay, now what I want you to do is, I want you to read it again. This time, I don't want you to write the sequence of the experiment, but I want you to write the linkers that were used to form or to write the whole process of the experiment. I'll give you 30 seconds. Example. Let's check your answers. Okay, easy. As I said earlier, you follow the linkers. Why did we say finally? Because khalas, we're done with the whole experiment. Now, what I wanted to choose, what I wanted to do is that I'm expecting you to write a descriptive paragraph in a similar way that was just presented. I'll give you a topic and I would like you to select. I'm giving you four topics. Making an omelette, a fruit juice, a fruit salad, a strawberry milkshake. Choose one of them and tell me how to make it. So tell me the process. Remember, brainstorm. First thing you do is brainstorm, list all the steps that you want to follow and then join them and form a paragraph by using the linking words. Okay? For example, I chose the omelette. So I kept the question how to make an omelette in five easy steps. I searched it, got the steps, wrote the ingredients, kept the linkers for me as a reminder. Now I'm going to convert this into a paragraph. I used the linkers. So first thing you do when you want to explain a certain process, have the question fixed, the ingredients, have your brain mind mapping or brainstorming the steps clear in front of you, have the linker and then based on that you form the paragraph. This way it's easier for you to track it. Let me go back so that you can see the difference. steps, ingredients, linkers, kept all in front of you, then you wrote the paragraph. Read the paragraph. I'll give you two minutes to read it. Uh, writing process. Let's read the entire paragraph together. How to make an omelet in five easy steps. Why did I specify five easy steps? Because I did my search, I had my brainstormings, I looked at the ingredients required, and then I stated. So, let's read it all together. Learn how to make the perfect omelette for a quick and a tasty meal. Follow the instructions to achieve that fluffy te texture in five easy steps. First, whisk the eggs in a bowl until they are well combined. Next, heat the butter in your frying pan until it starts to form, but don't let it get brown. Then add the eggs 
in, uh, in one go and swirl and shake the, the pan so that they cover the surface. As soon as the eggs start to set, pull the edge of the omelet into the center of the pan and shake the pan so any liquid eggs spill into the gaps. Add fillings of your choice now if you are using any. Your omelet is ready when the center is slightly liquid. It will continue to cook when you fold it over. Finally, fold the omelet in half as you slid it onto, onto, onto a plate. By that, we're done with the writing process. Remember, when you write a process or a paragraph that's describing a process, first have your mind map in which it tells you the required steps. So you have a clear idea. Then have the linking words next to you and then write the paragraph. By that, we reach the end of this lesson. Thank you and see you soon.